Cursed be the ground. For our sake. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for us. Okay. For out of the ground we were taken for the dust we are. And to the dust we shall return. Between this movie and the last one, it's been about seven or eight years. And in, in that time period, we've been always trying to find something that, you know, grabbed us. The script was just amazing. It had all the right ingredients. Everything is broken. The system, the world, the roads, the atmosphere, it's just, it's, it is ripe with decay. <laughs> the environment was so different, and the story was so different. Visually, it seemed exciting, and uh, also, uh, you, you know, you, you have these movies out there that are post-apocalyptic, but this one may be put in that category, but it felt so out of that, that realm. We knew we wanted the skies to be a character, you know, and to, uh, to be saying something and to be moving a certain direction, the same direction that Eli's moving. It's a very unusual look, as you know, you know, where uh, you've seen a lot of post-apocalyptic movies, and they all happen in big cities. This is rural America. All the people in this town, all the people in this world, through most of the movie, have never seen a blade of grass. They've never seen vegetation. It's dry, it's dank, it's dark. Uh, very specific look to this movie, something I've never seen before. You know, it's the first movie we've done with this many visual effects in it, and sometimes it's very frustrating because you can't see. So we brought on these artists, you know, Tommy Lee Edwards, Chris Weston, Rodolfo DiMaggio, and these guys are all from the comic book world. And nowadays, a lot of movies are being made from graphic novels and comic books, so we kind of reversed it in a way and said, well, let's get our look together with these guys and, you know, had one of them do the storyboards, had two of them do the visual kind of layout of the movie, the color uh, template and everything like that. And let's put together, put together a few books that uh, the whole cast and crew can look at and just get the vibe of the movie. And, uh, you know, it's worked from pre-production through post-production. I work in lots of different mediums, so sometimes I could be drawn with charcoal or working on the computer or working with paint, you know, it doesn't matter. So uh, it depends on what the job calls for. So I go through the script and see in my mind a certain shot and send Albert some ideas, some sketches. Maybe we could shoot it this way, we could shoot it that way. You know, do we see him from you know, the front or from behind. And then we just talk about all that stuff and you know, we wean it down into the finished piece. I collaborate with the uh, art department a lot, especially with the guys who've actually sat down and designed the set. And they'll give me all kinds of plans, uh, which I'll refer to when doing my storyboards. Here's a plan of George and Martha's house. And so then when I come to draw the, the scene that takes place there, the two match up. This is a dream job for me because uh, I'm kind of known previously in the comic strip industry for doing sort of gritty, realistic artwork and and with, with, with a slight air of decadence to it and you know decaying matter. And uh, I, I think I, that's probably what Albert recognised you know in my work. You know, it's probably why he wanted me to be on Book of Eli because everything in the the world of the Book of Eli is falling down or crumbling or. It, it's not looking too good. In creating the style books and some of the shot sequences have been really, really informative of how we were going in and adapting any of the sequences for the building or for any of the breakdowns of the sets. I think after we saw on the set the shots, you know, as compared to what we had prepped, you know, it was very similar. I'm actually really blown away at how close it looks to, to what, you know, Albert and I had worked up so long ago, you know, so it's it's really cool. <laughs> I love it. There was a certain look that Albert was going for that I don't think has been done to the extent that we've done in this film. Um, it just makes it makes the world, it brings it to life more. I think that their take on it was was brilliant because it 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 takes something that we've heard of and we've seen before in a society like this and it brings it to a place that we've never seen before.
Eli is a hero in the traditional movie sense, you know, because he does save uh, one or two people, um, not on purpose or not because he wanted to, but because he had to, you know. I think Eli uh, is an archetype character that we've seen. There's a little bit of uh, the wandering monk, you know. Um, we've seen little bits and pieces of, of it in other movies, but we haven't seen it like this. I just thought it was an interesting character that uh, was on a mission and was being tested. Yeah, it was very important to me from the beginning that Eli wasn't uh, like an ex-soldier or a combat vet or somebody that would already have these skills. I really wanted him to be an everyman. What are you doing? I think she's fascinated by Eli when she first meets him. Um, there's obviously something about him that, that she's drawn to. She's never really seen a man like him, and I think she just starts learning from him. And I think that inspires her to, you know, go and, and do something for herself. And his desire to protect this book and to do what he's been charged to do, and he's been doing it for so long and shedding a lot of blood to do it. I don't want any trouble. I think he gets to a place where his anger, his violence has taken over. Stop! Eli's a very peaceful, humble man, and um, a man of few words. And the only time he, the violence uh, comes out of him is when he's actually cornered. Open the pack and tip it out on the road nice and slow. Can't do that. You know, when somebody's, uh, or, or several group of people have put him in a position where he, he has to, he has to fight to, to survive. All right, we're gonna do it the hard way. He obviously learned along the way how to fight, how to use different tools, whether it be gun, bow and arrow, the machete. He, if you pay close attention, you'll see he doesn't really want to use his gun most of the time because the bullets are very scarce. It's, it's about efficiency for him, you know, it's about how to get from here to there in the simplest way. Part of the influence, uh, the inspiration for the character was looking at the old biblical stories of people who get chosen by God, characters like Job, who get plucked from obscurity and, and given these incredible hardships. He's just a man. To test their faith. He has a, a, a presence and a, a charisma and a, and a quiet to him. It's steady and it's resolute and it's composed. I've never seen anything quite like him. But then I've never met anyone quite like Denzel. From early on, Denzel was a part of the, the project. For us, that was the icing on the cake. I mean, to see Denzel play a role like this that you've never seen Denzel Washington play before is just fantastic. He, he shed about uh, 50 pounds plus, um, and that's not to mention the physical training he was doing, uh, uh, and then the fight training he was doing with Jeff Amata. Man, he was doing stuff that I couldn't do. I know I couldn't do. The preparation for the for the film was really a lot of fun just to to uh, go to the dojo and, and, and train with those guys. I guess we trained for about, I don't know, four or five months before we started shooting. And I, I had read the script, so I knew I was going to win the fights. <laughs> so working with Denzel has been a great experience. Um, He's a very smart actor, very intelligent, very physical, uh, works hard, wants to be, he's a perfectionist. I mean, I mean, that's probably why he is where he is today, because he's such a perfectionist, never completely satisfied. Probably has a photographic memory for all I know, because he remembers every detail. I would say I've never seen anybody prep so hard, you know, work nonstop to get the script right. You know, we'd be over his house for hours, you know, eight, nine, 10 hours, and he just wants to talk about the characters, wants to talk about characters that have nothing to do with him wants to go back over the uh, other versions of the script. What, what can we mine out of there? Denzel, ironically, started working on Carnegie first. And he flushed that character out. He used to always say, um, the good guy is only as good as the bad guy. <laughs> and it was, it was Denzel's idea for Gary Oldman as well. I decided to come on as a producer because I wanted to help them, you know, in, in, in surrounding them with talent, you know, not just in front of the camera, but, not, but behind the camera. Well, Denzel, for us, uh, not only professionally, but as, as moviegoers, is one of our, our best actors. I think there are very few actors who could pull this role off. He felt he's very method, you know, he totally became this character. 
And um, it was it was quite astonishing, you know, when we were working on the script, you know, he would get up and move around and become Eli in the room. And we, we got like a little glimpse of how he was going to bring this character to life.